you're saying to slow down healthcare in, in a way, slow down medicine. But what's like a, an idea that you have to maybe slow things down? Because doctors and physicians and anybody in healthcare practitioners, they have, they're always overall a patient. They always have a high patient load where it seems like their time is dwindling every year, every month. They have these new quotas. They, they got to hit. They got to bring in more patients for the hospital. Hospital has, has to make more money every year because it's not seen as like a good good revenue stream. So how can you really slow things down? Do you think maybe hire more physicians, more healthcare providers? What's something that we could to help slow things down? Because in this batch based society, it's more of like every year you have to be quicker. As, as humans, like even look at cell phones, we got things to be the fastest at fast technology. You want to get in and get out. You want to just be focused on speed where you could go and treat and then, and then have the patient leave or, or, or discharge them or maybe just do another uh, another consult next month. How can we, we slow things down in a society that's so focused on speeding things up? What a deep question, <laughs> right? But I want me to challenge humanity's uh, progression right now. Uh, I will say there are so many ways to respond to that question, right? Yes, there's a question of resourcing. If you have more staff, more clinicians, with less patient load, less patient visits, better naturally make things slower. And that is a different conversation of how can that even be possible in our current system. But I do think with our culture or culture, I'm using that word as like our technological culture and our expectations of what healthcare should be is moving towards convenience and efficiency, which has its value. If I show up to you with the STD, I want my antibiotics as quickly as I can, like, and as conveniently as I can. Mm. But if my mom has cancer and we don't have a cure for it, I want her to be cared for as an individual. And I'm not looking for just convenience. And there's a depth to that relationship. I don't think will change. So I think the slowness, even in our fast paced culture is important when somebody's going through life changing diagnosis or when somebody has multiple diagnosis. And we'd have a lot of people living like that, right? With diabetes, heart disease, just had a heart attack, and um, their family is also struggling with health issues. And I think there's value to be known at a deep level and have continuity with the same person there. And then even in our current system, I just bring it back to myself where I've seeing patients in 15 minute, 20 minute increments. Can I slow down medicine right this moment? Is that possible? And that is a challenge that I pose to myself. And I think it's possible. And I love, I think I brought this up. You all talk about mindfulness and presence a lot because there's a way we carry our bodies and our routines that we go through the day that everything's a blur. But I do think I can be really mindful in the day-to-day -day activity that I'm doing to help people feel like they're being heard and seen. I'm kind of talking very abstract right now, but I'm going to, I'm going to bring it back to It is, let's say I just saw a patient that, uh, that is from Ethiopia. And, you know, I've done a few episodes on the Ethiopian community. It's not comprehensive because it's hard to cover an entire history but an entire country's history of a culture. But I learned enough that I have the foundation to talk to patients from Ethiopia and living in my community. So when I am with them, yes, I talk about the medical problem, but also talk about how they're internalizing the conflict that's happening in their country. And you may or may not know this, but there is a, there's a lot of conflict in the country and we won't go into that. But I know that because of having this conversation and how that is weighing heavy in the mental health of that community because they told me directly. So now when I bring it up to my patients, it feels like to them, I'm not rushing through the visit of like, okay, here's diabetes, here's some medicine, take this, I'll see you in two weeks. But like, yeah, here's, that, here's what we, I want to do with that. But tell me, like, I know this has been affecting a lot of people in your community. Has that been affecting you too? And I think then they really open up in a way that even though the time hasn't changed, it feels like we're connecting at a deeper level. I'm kind of thinking about how we can improve this. I had an idea where I was thinking about a patient that I had where she was Spanish. She was very in distress because 
nobody has time to bring an interpreter next to the room to understand each other, right? We say we have to understand the culture, but sometimes we're in the speed of healthcare so much where we can't even communicate language to have some kind of regular baseline. I decided to take time, put the interpreter on and change her dressing. She had like a, a lab procedure with some, you know, um, lab. so she, she had a weird procedure because she did it half in Mexico, half here because it got infected. So she had like tubes or some piping to close this down. I don't know how to explain it. But anyways, piping, <laughs> piping, a PVC pipe. <laughs> What, what, hap what happened is I actually took time for the interpreter to communicate with her for 10 minutes and she was actually calm. Her heart rate went down. She was actually able to take a power nap. And imagine if we had a tool, like you mentioned, we we're able to spitball some things in her culture. We could go provide better care. Maybe we could interpret or merge AI somewhere with healthcare where this AI gives us a background of what's happening in their, you said utopia, what's happening in utopia, like the news, what do they like, for example, People in Chinese culture like a warm cup of hot tea in the morning. So you're able to better care to these patients. Like, wow, well, he actually knows that I like a hot cup of tea in the morning. So I'm thinking of what ways we could implement to slow it down or maybe just get faster at the thing because not everybody can have the proper education to understand like 200 different cultures, but maybe we could understand it by helping, you know, nurses and technology work together, like, together in a way. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. Let's create this together. I love it. <laughs> the yeah, I think there's two ways of thinking of that. One is, let's say, I'm going to say just where I am right now. There's a large Ethiopian community, at least that example. Uh, or it can use, you know, there's a large native Hawaiian community. And then many people may not have that. I think there's value to both of having this vision that you have. And for me, reaching out to the community leaders and building relationships with them, right? Because that's how I'm learning about the community, because in the future, now I have the relationships and I can reach out to them, give them more questions. So there's value to you building relationships with the people that you're taking care of. And this tool, imagine, yes, like how like 10 different communities that are uh, commonly come to my hospital or my clinic. But what about if there's like few people visiting from a different country or it's only like 20 people from Nepal here, like how much can I learn about that community quickly and having something like this, where I could totally imagine, uh, like a crash course or something like when you have the EMR come up, it also highlights like, Hey, people, uh, from this community, this is, uh, what they value. Again, you gotta be really care careful about stereotypical. So there's education around how to use them because you get the knowledge about how, what's important to them, the values, what decision making can look like. And then you present to the patient of like, Hey, like, this is what I know could be important to you. Is that true for you? And they could be, they could say like, I'm a second generation at police. Like I'm barely connected to my Nepal culture. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, or they could say, oh, thank you. Like, yes, like that would be really helpful because right now, a lot of the interventions are focused on community health workers and patient navigators, right, who are from the culture to bridge that gap between healthcare and the communities. And I think they're set at, yeah, the yes, the end of people and technology um, and people willing to invest in a technology that may or may not make them a lot of money. Because mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of the chat GPT API craze right now is directly to places that will make it easy to monetize, right? Mm -hmm.